Welcome to Xavier High School in Middletown, Connecticut. It's Saturday, June 25th, 2022. We have semi-professional football from the East Coast Football League, A-League. It's the Connecticut Thundercats versus the Connecticut Tar Heels. This is a rematch from this single A championship a year ago, won by the Thundercats. The Thundercats come in with an undefeated record, 1-0. They beat the Southington Valley Vipers last week, 18-14. The Tar Heels come in with an 0-1 record, having lost to the Windsor Flyers last week, 34 to nothing. So they'll be looking for their first win, and also they're scoring their first points. Uh, the Spring League are over, or pretty close to over. Both teams should be at full strength. Will the Tar Heels avenge that championship loss from a year ago? Or will the Thundercats pick up where they left off last year? It's LB and the Connecticut Thundercats versus Ray Anthony and the Connecticut Tar Heels from Xavier High School in Middletown, Connecticut, Saturday, June 25th, 2022. And that game is coming up next. I will do my best not to miss any action. If you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe. And let's get to the game. Looks like the Tar Heels won the toss. And Tar Heels will receive the opening kickoff. Which means they will kick off to the Thundercats to start the second half. That is Denzel, the music man, Mazone, on the return for the Tar Heels. All right, 
Tar Heels take over first play of the game from their own 30. Offside on the defense, five yard penalty, first down and five. That's offside on the Thundercats defense, automatic first down. Oh, 
It's a penalty on the Thunder Cats. Oh, <laughs> 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 
Well, that's a bad break for the Thundercats. The Tar Heels pick up the loose ball. And they are going to be in the red zone. Excellent field position. Bad snap. Mickey Fatroy is going to keep it himself, get very close to the goal line. I interrupt this program to issue an apology and an explanation. Now, before every game, I look at the roster for these teams. This is the online roster, as you can see, for the Connecticut Tar Heels. Okay, so I'm looking at the players on the team. I'm scrolling down, and then right in the middle of the screen there, of the, of the camera shot here, you'll see number five, Mickey Fantroy, the quarterback. Um, and I think even the back of his jersey says Fantroy. So naturally, I think number five is Mickey Fantroy. I mean, who wouldn't? But then I don't realize till after the game, somebody points out to me that it's really Brandon Garcia which you see right there with no number, and it says it is say quarterback. But apparently he was wearing number five, and it was actually Brandon Garcia and not Mickey Fantroy. So you can understand how confusing that can be. Uh, and I just want you guys watching to understand that, you know, I go to so many games, basketball games, high school football, semi-pro football, you name it. And especially with the new teams and new players it's extremely difficult to learn the players' names without looking at a roster. Even looking at a roster, I'm getting them wrong. Um, so, listen, it's, it's nothing personal. I'm sure you all know that. And I, I mean no disrespect, and I apologize to any and all players involved if I get a name wrong. So, with that in mind, thank you very much. Again, I, I'm going to say it throughout the game. It's Mickey Fantroy, but it's really Brandon Garcia. So, please keep that in mind. And um, let's get back to the game. Looks like the ball is at the five-yard line, third and goal from the five. Mickey Fantroy tries it again, but it's met immediately by the defense and is sacked by number 90 and 56 combined for the Thundercats. They'll bring up an interesting fourth down call coming up here for the Tar Heels. Fourth down and goal from about the seven yard line. Gonna fall incomplete. Turnover on downs, Thundercat ball. Golden opportunity missed by the Tar Heels. Big hit. Oh, 
It looks like he picked up a new for the first down. And Jamar Rock is going to get brought down for a sack. That takes us to the end of the first quarter. We have no score. Uh, Connecticut Thundercats, zero. Connecticut Tar Heels, zero. Timeout, Thundercats. Another bad snap, and that's going to result in a safety. So those are your first points on the board in 2022 for the Connecticut Tar Heels. Two points for a safety after a bad high snap on a punt attempt for the Thundercats. So it's 2 nothing Tar Heels, and they'll get the ball back. Pretty good return. The Tar Heels will have the ball in Thundercat territory across midfield. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Mickey Fentroy is going to keep it himself. Oh! He got popped. That's a big sack by the Thundercats. Looks like Mickey Fantroy is back in the game at quarterback. Tyron Mays filled in, so he was uh, good enough to come back in. Look out. That's the fumble after a sack. And the big guy's got it and run with it. Takes it down to the 30 yard line to the Tar Heels. Number 95.
That might have been Ray Patton Jr. Who joined the Thundercats from the Connecticut Falcons, I believe. Who recovered that fumble. Number six, that's Markel Dobbs with a nice run. Should be good enough for a first down. Markel Dobbs, who's played with the Connecticut Mustangs. Also played with uh, Ansonia Chargers in high school. Big legacy there for the Dobbs family at uh, Ansonia. Markel Dobbs with a direct snap. It's going to pick up about five or six yards, maybe. snap again directed Markel Dobbs gonna throw it it's incomplete third down and five ball on the 25 yard line of the Tar Heels Dobbs going to be very close to a first down. He's really going to depend on the spot here. Had to get to the 20. I think he might be about a yard short. Fourth down in a yard for the Thundercats coming up here, and they're going to call timeout and talk this over. Okay, so here we go. A big fourth down play coming up here. Fourth and one. That's Swenson with the ball, and he looks like he's got enough for the first down. Stevie Swenson. Tripped up by number 28 there. Hello. Twenty-eight was Keenan Hayes. Keenan Hayes with the trip tackle for a loss, it looked like. Jamal Rock's going to fake the handoff and keep it himself. Maybe get a couple of yards. Sure, I was looking for him earlier. But it looks like the guy in the blue might be one of the coaches. But that's not Ray Anthony. 
That's intercepted. Not sure who that was to. That's a pick six. To be honest with you, I kind of missed it. I apologize for that. So the touchdown is good, and they're calling an unsportsmanlike conduct on the Tar Heels after the touchdown. And I don't know if that's going to be assessed on the kickoff or to the extra point. We'll find out. Probably the kickoff. Extra point is good. The Thundercats take a 7-2 lead just before halftime. That pick six was made by Jeremiah Faust, I believe. Jeremiah Faust.
It's going to be a turnover on downs. Thundercat ball very, very late in the first half here. And Tar Heels call timeout. LB, LB, William Gerald, Gerald has done an amazing job turning this program around from a couple years ago to winning a championship last year. Now they're 1-0, leading 7-2 before halftime here. He's got this Thundercat team going in the right direction. I can't tell if that was caught or not. My apologies for that. I was in a really bad position with that canopy. Just like the one spot of the darn field where I'm going to be at a big disadvantage there. Looks like it was caught. And it looks like it's down to the one or two yard line. Clock is ticking. Look, we got, looks like he got in to complete to Justin Lopez for a touchdown. It is, there's a signal. Next point is good. Thundercats lead 14 to 2. And just like that, we reach halftime. The Connecticut Thundercats 14. The Connecticut Tar Heels 2. Okay, so we've reached halftime with the Connecticut Thundercats leading the Connecticut Tar Heels 14-2. to um, As you can read what I wrote here, and I'll mention it too, 
it was very, very hot and humid. And the, the weather, the heat hit me very, very hard. Um, I honestly felt like I was going to pass out. I had water with me. I had a hat on. I, I, I was prepared. But I, maybe I should have had more water or something. Um, I just want to give a shout out to LJ Diaz. He pointed out to me there was an available room in a press box. It was a little bit cooler. And it allowed me to film the rest of the game in the second half, which was in doubt at the time. Um, there's a screen that kind of covers the view of the field. So the video quality is not going to be as good. It's going to be compromised a bit. But, you know, it's, I guess it's better than nothing. I did the best I could with what I had. Um, so that being said, I wanted to at least point this out and apologize for the quality of the video in the second half. Um, but otherwise, uh, that's the reason why. Thanks a lot and uh, enjoy, enjoy the rest of the game. I'm out, Thundercats. going to say his knee touched the ground when he caught the ball. Big tackle, I think it might be Markel Dobbs for the Thundercats. Thank you. 
I believe that's Stevie Swenson with the carry. And I apologize, folks, if you notice the quality of the filming is a little different in the second half here. I felt uh, really, really lightheaded. It is very, very hot and humid out there. <clears throat> and I'm inside the announce booth now. There's a screen in front of me. But I had to do something because it was... <clears throat> It was really, I was ready to pass out, to be honest with you. Oh, man, that was a big hit. That really big hit for the Tar Heels was by Tarun McClellan. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, probably not, but McClellan.
What's the call? Inter incomplete or interception? I think they're calling it incomplete. Otherwise, Shamari Evans, I think, is the one who was in there. So again, at halftime, I moved into the booth. There's a little screen in front of me, but it is so hot and humid out there. I darn near passed out at halftime. <laughs> Maybe from heat exhaustion or what, I don't know. I've got water, but this is a little bit cooler in here. So hopefully I can finish the game out in here. It's 14 to two, Thundercats with the lead. Stevie Swinson with the carry. Eric Jones Jr. pitches to Markel Dobbs, who stands up the defender. And they're jawing back and forth here. Looks like that is the end of the third quarter. Our score remains Connecticut Thundercats 14, Connecticut Tar Heels 2.
Pagano on the carry. Chris Pagano. Chris Pagano takes it to the outside, gets tripped up, tackled for a loss, it looked like. That looks like uh, Tyron McClellan again. He's had a couple of big plays here in the second half. McClellan. Timeout called by the Thundercats. That was almost picked off. It looks like they're going for a field goal. It looks like it'll be about a 37-yard field goal attempt. It is too many men in the field called against the Tar Heels. I'm going to move up another five yards, make it a little bit closer. Should be about a 32-yard field goal attempt now. It is no good. It looked like it was wide left. So the score remains... 14 to 2 in favor of the Thundercats. That was a low snap, and then it's intercepted. The second interception of the game. He had a pick six earlier. That is Jeremiah Faust with his second interception of the game. Jeremiah Faust. Blue, 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 blue. 
sitting next to Ed Frazier, number one. Who knows a thing or two to interceptions, by the way, Ed Frazier does. I think Ed Frazier may have led the league in interceptions last year, or pretty close to it. Edward Jones Jr. just overthrows Sawyer Nicholas, the tight end. It's an inside handoff to Lorenzo Catlett, who hobbles off the field after a pretty good pickup. Coach LB likes what he sees there from his team today. Give was to the other Dobbs brother, Trayon Dobbs, number seven. There's Chris Pagano with the carry. It's a 10 yard touchdown run. I interrupt your program to issue kind of an apology and, ex and an explanation. The touchdown just scored by the Connecticut Thundercats rushing it is Markel Dobbs. At least that's what it says on the program number six. Um, I honestly didn't realize that until after I looked back at the video. You're going to find me following Trayon Dobbs, number seven, after the fact, basically guessing at that point. Um, you may have remembered my announcement at halftime. I was very, very sick. Um, the heat, the heat was getting to me very, very bad. And um, honestly, just wanted to get through this as best I could. Um, uh, and, and, you know, 
it was really hard to follow the action in the second half in general, as you could probably tell. So again, my apologies. I believe that was Markel Dobbs, number six, who scored that touchdown. As I look back at the video now, uh, and I, you know, followed Trayon Dobbs instead on the way back. So I apologize to the names involved for not getting it right. Um, so anyway, with that in mind, thank you very much. Uh, I again, I wasn't, I was not one hundred percent, and just trying to get through this game, the second half. So uh, thank you for understanding. And without wasting any more time, let's get back out to the game. I think that was Trayon Dobbs. Also from Insonia. It's a bad snap. Extra point, no good. Thundercats lead 20 to 2. Capped by a 10 yard rush by Dobbs. Big tackle by Dominic Gennetti Jr. So at the conclusion of this game, I am not going to stick around very long. I'm going to try to run over and get an evening game. It'll probably be in progress. But hopefully I'll get some water, some more water in me and a little bit cooler at evening. It won't be as hot. Alright, two minutes. I just heard two minutes left in the game. Two minutes. We're at the two minute warning.
Thundercats lead 20 to 2. Fourth quarter. And I'm going to take a second here to just let you, the, the viewers know, watching this on YouTube, you know, I was approached by four teams, including these two teams and two other teams. So three games, basically, and a lot of them overlap or, or run at the same time. I hate to say no to anybody. I wish I could film every game. I really do. But obviously, it's impossible. I'm like literally one person filming, talking, editing, producing, directing, <laughs> sometimes interviewing. So, you know, it's a no-win situation if you ask me. And I apologize to the teams that I don't get to film this week. And one of those games is the Southington Valley Vipers at the Northeast Bulls, their home game. And I know there's going to be some disappointed folks in that, in the, that group. But the way I look at it is, if I can get two games in, and as I talk about this, it might be a touchdown. It is a touchdown. So Thundercats get another score. And now lead 26 to 2. So as I was saying, the way that I like to look at it is I want to try to get as many games as I can on a Saturday. So if I can get an early game in, an early er game, and then I can get a later game in, I'll try to do that. But the you know, I'm telling you, the, the Vipers and Bulls are at 530. That's just such a difficult time. I mean I could do that game, but that would be like the only game I would be able to film. I'm going to try to run over and get another game that starts at 6 or 7 after this one, which started at 4. It'll probably be in progress, and it's most likely going to be in progress. But I guess it's better than nothing, even though I don't really don't like doing that. So I guess what I'm trying to I just really want to issue an apology. I just, like I said, I wish I could film every game, but it's just physically impossible. Extra point is good, and I think that was Justin Lopez that ran that in. If I can straighten out my camera here. And as he waves a little goodbye there to the Tar Heels. And that makes the score 28-2 to 2 in favor of the Thundercats. That might be the game. Naturally, tensions are going to be high with the Tar Heels having lost their second in a row now. Uh, being all scored, I believe, by a combined score of 62 to 2. So the Tar Heels got to go back to the drawing board and try to figure out and, and, and fix this problem that they have. They're 0-2 now. LB and the Thundercats move to 2-0.
Okay, and on that note, the Connecticut Tar Heels, hopefully with Ray Anthony, will try to right this ship and fix this infighting within the team. And LB and his Connecticut Thundercats continue to roll. They are moved to 2-0. The Tar Heels fall to 0-2. Final score, Connecticut Thundercats 28. And the Connecticut Tar Heels 2. The Thundercats score 28 unanswered points after falling behind 2-0 on a safety. And that is your final from Ben Foisey Memorial Stadium at Xavier High School in Middletown, Connecticut, Saturday, June uh, 25th, 2022. Your, the Connecticut Thundercats 28, Connecticut Tar Heels 2. Uh, thanks very much for watching on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Have a good evening, afternoon, and drive home safely.